Hey, Ron here from Military Images with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. As a researcher, some of my favorite finds are references to how people felt during an event, especially during a battle or some other moment of great tension. I'm fascinated by the emotions that were running through them as they prepared for some activity, some action that they imagined would forever change their lives. Before they were going into battle, during a battle, the loss of a comrade or another loved one, some major event, how did it strike them? How did it make them feel? How did their comrades and those around them feel in the moment? Well, Charles Minor Blackford, who is pictured here, captured the vibe of Pickett's Charge in his little-known 1891 book, Annals of the Lynchburg Home Guard. He's a Virginian, and this tells the story of his hometown company, which became Company G of the 11th Virginia Infantry. The 11th was at Gettysburg. The 11th was at Pickett's Charge, and they were very proud after the event of their participation as Blackford lays out in the book. I should tell you a little bit more about Blackford. He's best remembered for him being on the staff of General James Longstreet and for his 1894 memoirs co-authored with his wife, Susan. That book is titled Life in and Out of the Army of Virginia, and it's considered a historically significant publication and it's been reprinted several times since it was first published and shows up in numerous other books as a primary source. Anyway, back to Pickett's Charge and Annals of Lynchburg Home Guard. I want to read this passage from the book to give you a sense of what Blackford picked up from the soldiers who were there. Here we go. Quote, a vague feeling that something unusual was to happen had spread over both armies. The field was in silence and breathless expectation. About two o'clock, a single gun fired a signal, and at the sound, the attacking column made its appearance. This consisted of Pickett's division, supported on the left by Pettigrew, commanding Heath's division, and on the right by Anderson's brigade. For a moment, even the enemy seemed appalled by the courage of the movement, but soon recovering, opened a terrific fire on that devoted band. The veterans moved onward with steadiness that was irresistible. Canister, grape, and shell made great gaps in their lines, but still onward they pressed. The foot of the ridge was gained and the upward climb commenced. The supporting columns had fallen back and Pickett's men were left alone and unsupported. Yet the gallant Virginians marched steadily onwards. Their lines were torn with a fire of musketry and artillery that has rarely been equaled. But at last, the crest of the hill was reached, and with a wild dash, they broke over the entrenchments and planted their banners on the captured guns. But the victory won could not be held, some troops who had before been holding their ground gave way, and this enabled the Federals to throw heavy reinforcements on Cemetery Ridge, and as, for some reason, Pickett was not supported, his force was driven back, leaving the greater part of its number dead on the field or in the hands of the enemy. So, there you have it. This is Charles Minor Blackford's recounting of the vibe before Pickett's charge and how they went into battle in that after that moment of quiet and stillness and sort of the shock. Uh, I pick up the shock of the movement of Pickett's division and the supporting troops broke that vibe. It broke that stillness. And of course, Blackford, a proud Virginian and proud of his Lynchburg home guard, puts a positive spin on it while at the same time recognizing that the Union Army came into play with reinforcements after that initial uh, pushback from Pickett's charge as it planted its colors within the Union lines. So until we meet again, happy trails.